So the Masters was this weekend. Okay, buyer, please don't be alarmed at our answers. And I bring it up because Dan is, he's more than an avid golf fan. Like he is, he loves this stuff and follows it. Plus he has a Sunday show too, so I know he's watching on, on Sunday. Uh, Jay Stu, how much did you watch of the Masters? Um, exactly zero. I followed the Masters on Twitter. So it was like after it happened. I think the um, the handshake by Tiger and Vern Lundquist was made into a, a, an amusing meme um, because you couldn't see Vern behind the tree. So it looked like Tiger was shaking the hands of the tree. Yes. And the, the most comical meme of the weekend was uh, some kind of a reference to the tree that he hit with his car, which is yes. dark humor, but I love yes. dark humor. Yeah, I, it was Well, nobody was killed. Tiger was hurt pretty badly, but nobody was killed. Right, so I I like that. That's it's acceptable dark humor. Acceptable dark humor. Um, okay, uh, I was Sam. How many minutes of the of the Masters did you watch? Uh, probably about ten to fifteen minutes via highlights. So you didn't watch any of the Masters? Not live, no. Okay. okay. You see what he tried to do there, guys. You, you saw that, right? I mean, I saw footage of it, so it's not like I, you know. That that again. I didn't just, watch it just, live. Just so you know, Sam, that is like if you have a layover in Salt Lake City, you can't say I, I went to Utah. Yeah, no, no, right? No, I didn't. I didn't watch it live. I went no. to Dallas over the weekend. Really? What'd you do? Well, I had a layover in Dallas, and I was on my way to you know. That's fair. That's I, fair. It's the same thing. Totally uh, fair. Buyer most memorable part of the Masters, the 2024 Masters, is what. Scotty Scheffler's shot on nine. Second shot on nine. That really kind of made it. Um, it d- then it was like, oh, well, Scotty Scheffler's winning this thing. I was watching it on my phone, and all of a sudden, all my friends who are avid golfers were texting me like, all right, boys, what are we doing the rest of the afternoon? Because it felt like that was right around 9, 10, 11. That's when it became, all right, this thing's over. Um, in, in, in comparison to the other masters years and other masters moments, will Scotty Scheffler stand up the test of time, Dan Byer? I don't think that his story is finished. I don't think that he will be done after two masters victories. I think he could win another. I think he could possibly win two. I don't think this one will stand the test of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, look, the juxtaposition of Scotty Scheffler, who is dominating, and Tiger Woods, who is struggling, and yet the attention and the energy we spend to Tiger, some of it obviously is his greatness, but a lot of it is, you know, that, uh, that we're just trying to, you know, just trying to figure out um, who, we can, who we can next turn our attention to, and do we even take the Tiger Woods thing seriously anymore? Yeah, but uh, it is... Go ahead, I'm I, sorry. No, I... I because I've got, I got a lot to say about what happened with Scheffler and what happens with the Masters, but I also think there's a whole separate Tiger conversation. So we could go down the Tiger conversation, if you will. What, what I thought happened with Tiger was what Tiger had at stake this past week was breaking Fred Couples and Gary Players' consecutive cuts uh, made streak at Augusta National, at the Masters. They all were tied with 23 straight cuts. Tiger, as we know, like a lot of the field, uh, were affected by the weather on Thursday, but Tiger had to come back and play five early holes on Friday morning. When we were in for Dan Patrick, Tiger was on the course at that time, then had about an hour turnaround and had to go and play 18 holes, which he made the cut comfortably, very comfortably. But what I think happened, Doug, was – the main goal for Tiger this week, who, again, he's teed it up once in 2024. That was at the Genesis where he had to withdraw because he was ill. I think Tiger put everything he had into making the cut and making sure that he was there for the weekend. And having the additional five holes, I don't think was ideal with him, but I don't think that's like the ultimate game breaker or game changer. I think his ultimate goal was to make the weekend, to have the record by himself, because we're not going to remember 
you know, him shooting in the 80s. What we're going to remember is that now Tiger Woods holds the Augusta record for most consecutive cuts made at 24. And I think he put everything that he had into it to make sure that he played the weekend. And then because of his lack of reps and where he is, he didn't have anything to show for it when you played on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. It's a great, it's a, it's a great, great way of looking at it. Um, I think, again, I think that is a super in-depth and interesting way of, of looking at it that you and I are interested in. I think the Jason Stewart's of the world, and Jason, if I'm, if I'm speaking on a turn, you let me know. It's like, I used to be in the Tiger, now there's just a bunch of guys. And then every time I hear that a guy is going to be the next guy, he's not the next guy. You know, uh, is that is so I'm not really that super into golf. I was super into Tiger Woods. I'll tell you this much. um, I typically watch Sundays. I typically watch a good portion of the uh, leaders on Sunday. And once Tiger had that Saturday, it took away my interest in watching on Sunday. And I, I think I'm not alone in that one. As far as the casual, no, I think that I think I think you're you're completely not alone. I think that you nailed the issue. And it's not to say that like Scheffler's been awesome, and and this is, I mean, baseball has the same thing as well. Obviously, basketball has it. With, I mean, how many players out there are incredible young players in the NBA? But like, we're still paying attention to Steph and to and to LeBron. You know, and they're still playing, but if they're easily like watch what happens with the NBA's ratings when one of those two gets eliminated in the play in, like it's going to be different. You know, I I know like if, if we talk about it as a whole and I'll just say I'll say this about the Masters. We all have a favorite TV show, right? Right. We all. Doug Seinfeld, I think the Cheers, you know. Cheers, cheers is actually mine. Cheers, cheers then Seinfeld, but you're, you're right. You're, you're on it. What's, what's yours? Um, uh, King of Queens okay. is probably my all-time favorite. And there are some episodes of King of Queens that I absolutely love. And there are some that I'm like, all right, okay, I don't need to watch this one again. And I would feel that it's the same thing with, with Cheers. Every episode's not going to be the magnificent drop-dead funny one. Some are better than others. And I think that, I think that that is... That is the case with this Masters. It just is one of those that, all right, maybe it's not as good as it was in 97 or or in other great years. It will fall into the to the role of that. I do think that there are bigger problems, but it's not just with Tiger Woods. It has to do with Liv. It has to do with Scotty Scheffler's personality. It's got to do with a lot of it. And it's it's funny on how like we've gotten to this point because I think there's been Liv is not a paper cut, but if you want to take the the, the splitting of Liv Golf even just away from this, I think there have been other paper cuts along the way that have ended up hurting the sport and not allowing us to be as uh, involved as maybe we once would be if Tiger Woods wasn't. I mean, Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas was like seven over par in his final four holes to to miss the cut. Spieth was all over the place. He didn't make the cut. They're not like cashing in on their ability to capitalize on their stardom. Okay. The rival to Scotty Scheffler is in Live Golf, the guy that gave him the green jacket yesterday. Rory was mediocre over the weekend. Like there's there's a lot to to go with to go with it as well. I would even say this. If you remember back when Phil won the PGA Championship at Kiowa, and this was in 2021. This was before the whole live thing happened. And we touched a little bit about this on Friday. But you know what else was going on aside from Mickelson winning the Masters when he was 50? Brooks Kepka was a badass. Brooks Kepka couldn't stand Bryson DeChambeau because Bryson DeChambeau was trying to be the Hulk, okay, and trying to do everything. All of those stories were actually interesting. We were watching Bay Hill because DeChambeau was trying to drive the par five sixth hole, cutting over 90% of a lake. Like that was interesting. He's not into that anymore. There's no rivalry between him and Brooks Kepka, and if there was, we wouldn't know about it because it's at Live. Like there are all these things that could have like gained interest. John Rahm may not move the needle for everybody, but if he was a rival to Scotty Scheffler and he had the two of the world's best going at it, I think that would be very, very compelling. And instead, you had Scotty Scheffler, who's ho hum, Ludwig Oberg, who's playing in his first Masters, and. <laughs> As a you know what twenty one twenty two year old Swede, Colin Morikawa doesn't ooze flashiness. 
it's a lot of this stuff that is added up and, and played in. Because I thought a lot about that. Because I, I, it's all I did this weekend is right. you know watch right. watch all of this. But I think a lot of that stuff is what plays into it. If live and I think live is huge because if live doesn't come along, we're still like familiar with these guys and Cam Smith and Bryson DeChambeau. We're on the leaderboard. We probably didn't care as much because we've kind of forgotten about them. And Bryson isn't the bad boy that he was three years ago, and yeah. there isn't the rivalry with Brooks. There's so a lot of that stuff has kind of fallen by the wayside, and and golf's never going to be the same, and it hasn't had a lot of momentum. And I think people were hoping that the Masters was going to save that and try to bring that back. And I'm I'm not sure if it did this past weekend. I I I didn't think it brought it back. I I agree with you on rivalries. Um, I I honestly agree with you on. Uh, the, on, it's not just rivalries. It's like the uh, the infighting within the family. As much as it's a bad look, you know, maybe throughout the year, it would be a good look at the end of these tournaments if we had Live versus PGA, and they would embrace that. But the nice, plain Jane guys, it's really hard. Sure. Can but, I tell you the, the one problem with the 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 rivalry of the Live versus the PGA Tour is that the li- Live players. Because we don't care, and I don't think that there's enough. Like there, it's just, it's different of being on that tour. If they were all on the PGA tour and battling week in and week out, then we've got something. But here, they go away for three or four weeks, then they show up again. Then they're all together. Then they go away for three or four weeks, and they show up at the U.S. Open. There's just no way to get momentum. There's no way to carry anything over. It's just it it. It's really fractured the game. There, there were other issues with it as well, and I just, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really too bad. I mean, as a golf fan, as much as it pains me to have people comment on the Masters who yeah. don't comment the other 364 days of the year, I also don't like to hear people being like, "Yeah, I didn't watch. I didn't care." You know, like that actually stinks. That's not good. I think there's a lot of reasons for it. I would say the difference for me is. I watched, but I was I was I wasn't to the level of Jason Stewart where I was completely turned off when Tiger didn't win. But it was not a it was no longer appointment sit down on my couch viewing. It was on my phone while doing some other things while having a nice other day. I that I I happened to watch it and I saw the turn of events in the middle of you know right at the turn and I was like, yep, going to be Scotty Scheffler. And then I just started kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, indulging a little bit on Scotty Scheffler info and why he's been so good and where it turned in his career and all that, all that other stuff.